Maria Gimbutas Lithuanian, Maria Gimbutien, January 23, 1921 to February 2, 1994, was a Lithuanian American archaeologist and anthropologist known for her research into the Neolithic and Bronze Age cultures of Old Europe, and for her Kurgan hypothesis, which located the Proto-Indo-European homeland in the Pontic Steppe. Topic: <laughs> Biography. <laughs> Topic. Early life Born as Maria Byrat Alsikate to Veronica Janulaidite Alsikine and Danielius Alsaka in Vilnius, the capital of Republic of Central Lithuania, her parents were members of the Lithuanian intelligentsia, her mother received a doctorate in ophthalmology at the University of Berlin in 1908 and became the first female physician in Lithuania, while her father received his medical degree from the University of Tartu in 1910. After the 1917 Russian Revolution, Gimbutas's parents founded the first Lithuanian hospital in the capital. During this period, her father also served as the publisher of the newspaper Vilnius Zodis and the cultural magazine Vilnius Svieza and was an outspoken proponent of Lithuanian independence during the Polish Lithuanian War. Gimbutas's parents were connoisseurs of traditional Lithuanian folk arts and frequently invited contemporary musicians, writers, and authors to their home, including Vaidunas, Uuzas Tumas Vaisgantas, and Jonas Basanovichis. With regard to her strong cultural upbringing, Gimbutas said, I had the opportunity to get acquainted with writers and artists such as Vaidunas, Tumas Vaisgantas, even Basanovichis, who was taken care of by my parents. When I was four or five years old, I would sit in Basanovichus's easy chair and I would feel fine. And later, throughout my entire life, Basanovichus's collected folklore remained extraordinarily important for me. In 1931, Gimbutas settled with her parents in Kaunas, the temporary capital of Lithuania, where she continued her studies. After her parents separated that year, she lived with her mother and brother, Vaitadas, in Kaunas. Five years later, her father died suddenly. At her father's deathbed, Gimbutas pledged that she would study to become a scholar. All of a sudden I had to think what I shall be, what I shall do with my life. I had been so reckless in sports. Swimming for miles, skating, bicycle riding. I changed completely and began to read. In 1941, she married architect Jurgis Gimbutas. During the Second World War, Gimbutas lived under both Soviet and German occupations from 1940-41 and 1941-43, respectively. Emigration <inaudible> 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 Their first daughter, Danute, was born in June 1942. Early in 1944, the young Gimbutas family fled the country in the face of an advancing Soviet army, first to Vienna and then to Innsbruck and Bavaria. In her reflection of this turbulent period, Gimbutas remarked, Life just twisted me like a little plant, but my work was continuous in one direction. While holding a postdoctoral fellowship at Tubingen the following year, Gimbutas gave birth to her second daughter, Javile. She did postgraduate work at the University of Heidelberg and the University of Munich from 1947 to 1949. The Gimbutas family left Germany and relocated to the United States in 1949. Her third daughter, Rasa Julia, was born in August 1954 in Boston. Topic: <laughs> Death She died in Los Angeles in 1994 at age 73. Soon afterwards, she was interred in Kanazas Petrosunai Cemetery. Topic: <laughs> Career. From 1936, she participated in ethnographic expeditions to record traditional folklore and studied Lithuanian beliefs and rituals of death. She graduated with honors from Osra Gymnasium in Kaunas in 1938 and enrolled in the Vytautas Magnus University the same year, where she studied linguistics in the Department of Philology. She then attended the University of Vilnius to pursue graduate studies in archaeology under Jonas Puzinas, linguistics, ethnology, folklore and literature. In 1942 she completed her master's thesis, Modes of Burial in Lithuania in the Iron Age, with honors. She received her Master of Arts degree from the University of Vilnius, Lithuania, in 1942. In 1946, Gimbutas received a doctorate in archaeology, with minors in ethnology and history of religion, from Tübingen University with her dissertation, 
Prehistoric Burial Rites in Lithuania, in German, which was published later that year. After arriving in the United States, Gimbutas immediately went to work at Harvard University translating Eastern European archaeological texts. She then became a lecturer in the Department of Anthropology. In 1955 she was made a fellow of Harvard's Peabody Museum. Gimbutas was Professor Emeritus at UCLA, where she became Professor of European Archaeology and Indo-European Studies in 1964 and Curator of Old World Archaeology in 1965. The Maria Gimbutas papers are held at Opus Archives and Gimbutas's personal library is held in the Joseph Campbell and Maria Gimbutas Library. Topic. Kurgan hypothesis In 1956 Gimbutas introduced her Kurgan hypothesis, which combined archaeological study of the distinctive Kurgan burial mounds with linguistics to unravel some problems in the study of the Proto-Indo-European speaking peoples, whom she dubbed the Kurgans, namely, to account for their origin and to trace their migrations into Europe. This hypothesis, and the act of bridging the disciplines, has had a significant impact on Indo-European studies. During the 1950s and early 1960s, Gimbutas earned a reputation as a world-class specialist on Bronze Age Europe, as well as on Lithuanian folk art and the prehistory of the Balts and Slavs, partly summed up in her definitive opus, Bronze Age Cultures of Central and Eastern Europe 1965. In her work she reinterpreted European prehistory in light of her backgrounds in linguistics, ethnology, and the history of religions, and challenged many traditional assumptions about the beginnings of European civilization. As a professor of European archaeology and Indo-European studies at UCLA from 1963 to 1989, Gimbutas directed major excavations of Neolithic sites in southeastern Europe between 1967 and 1980, including Anzabegovo, near Stip, Republic of Macedonia, and Sidegroi and Achillion in Thessaly, Greece. Digging through layers of earth representing a period of time before contemporary estimates for Neolithic habitation in Europe, where other archaeologists would not have expected further finds, she unearthed a great number of artifacts of daily life and of religious cults, which she researched and documented throughout her career. During her successful career, Gimbutas stated, After a millennium when the Hun Empire collapsed, a distinct Slavic culture re-emerged and spread rapidly. And Neither Bulgars nor Avars colonized the Balkan Peninsula. After storming Thrace, Illyria, and Greece, they went back to their territory north of the Danube. It was the Slavs who did the colonizing. Three genetic studies in 2015 gave support to the Kurgan theory of Gimbutas regarding the Indo European Urheimat. According to those studies, haplogroups R1b and R1a, now the most common in Europe R1a is also common in South Asia would have expanded from the Russian steppes, along with the Indo-European languages. They also detected an autosomal component present in modern Europeans which was not present in Neolithic Europeans, which would have been introduced with paternal lineages R1b and R1a, as well as Indo-European languages. Topic Late archaeology Gimbutas gained fame and notoriety in the English-speaking world with her last three English-language books, The Goddesses and Gods of Old Europe 1974, The Language of the Goddess 1989, which inspired an exhibition in Wiesbaden, 1993–94, and The Last of the Three, The Civilization of the Goddess 1991, which, based on her documented archaeological findings, presented an overview of her conclusions about Neolithic cultures across Europe, housing patterns, social structure, art, religion, and the nature of literacy. The civilization of the goddess articulated what Gimbutas saw as the differences between the old European system, which she considered goddess and woman-centered gynocentric, and the Bronze Age Indo-European patriarchal androcratic culture which supplanted it. According to her interpretations, gynocentric or matristic societies were peaceful, honored women, and espoused economic equality. The androcratic, or male-dominated, Kurgan peoples, on the other hand, invaded Europe and imposed upon its natives the hierarchical rule of male warriors. Gimbutas's work, along with that of her colleague, mythologist Joseph Campbell, is housed in the Opus Archives and Research Center on the campus of the Pacifica Graduate Institute in Carpinteria, California. The library includes Gimbutas's extensive collection on the topics of archaeology, mythology, folklore, art and linguistics. The Gimbutas archives house over 12,000 images personally taken by Gimbutas of sacred figures, as well as research files on Neolithic cultures of Old Europe. 
Topic doctorate In 1946, Maria Gimbutas received her PhD in Archaeology and Applied Sciences from the University of Tübingen, Germany. Her doctoral dissertation was titled, Die Bestetung in Litauen in der Vorgeschichtlichen Zeit Burials in Lithuania in Prehistoric Times and was published by J.C.B. Moore, Germany. She often said that she had the dissertation under one arm and her child under the other arm when she and her husband fled the city of Kaunas, Lithuania in the face of an advancing Soviet army in 1944. In 1993, Maria Gimbutas received an honorary doctorate at Vytautas Magnus University in Kaunas, Lithuania. Topic influence Gimbutas's theories have been extended and embraced by a number of neopaganism authors. Gimbutas did identify the diverse and complex Paleolithic and Neolithic female representations she recognized as depicting a single universal great goddess, but also as manifesting a range of female deities, snake goddess, bee goddess, bird goddess, mountain goddess, mistress of the animals, etc., which were not necessarily ubiquitous throughout Europe. In a tape entitled The Age of the Great Goddess, Gimbutas discusses the various manifestations of the goddess which occur, and stresses the ultimate unity behind them, all of the earth is feminine. In 2003, filmmaker Donna Reed and neo-pagan author and activist Starhawk released a collaborative documentary film about the life and work of Gimbutas, Signs Out of Time. The film produced under the label Balili Productions examines her theories, her critics, and her influence on scholars, feminists and social thinkers. Topic assessment Topic Praise Joseph Campbell and Ashley Montague each compared the importance of Maria Gimbutas's output to the historical importance of the Rosetta Stone in deciphering Egyptian hieroglyphs. Campbell provided a foreword to a new edition of Gimbutas's The Language of the Goddess 1989 before he died, and often said how profoundly he regretted that her research on the Neolithic cultures of Europe had not been available when he was writing The Masks of God. The ecofeminist Charlene Spretnik argued in 2011 that a backlash against Gimbutas's work had been orchestrated, starting in the last years of her life and following her death. Topic reception Mainstream archaeology dismissed Gimbutas's later works. Anthropologist Bernard Wales of the University of Pennsylvania commented to the New York Times that most of Gimbutas's peers believe her to be immensely knowledgeable but not very good in critical analysis. She amasses all the data and then leaps from it to conclusions without any intervening argument. He said that most archaeologists consider her to be an eccentric. David W. Anthony has praised Gimbutas's insights regarding the Indo European Urheimat, but also disputed Gimbutas's assertion that there was a widespread peaceful society before the Kurgan incursion, noting that Europe had hillforts and weapons, and presumably warfare, long before the Kurgan. A standard textbook of European prehistory corroborates this point, stating that warfare existed in Neolithic Europe and that adult males were given preferential treatment in burial rites. Peter Ucko and Andrew Fleming were two early critics of the goddess theory, with which later Gimbutas came to be associated. Ucko, in his 1968 monograph Anthropomorphic Figurines of Predynastic Egypt, warned against unwarranted inferences about the meanings of statues. He notes, for example, that early Egyptian figurines of women holding their breasts had been taken as obviously significant of maternity or fertility, but the pyramid texts revealed that in Egypt this was the female gesture of grief. Fleming, in his 1969 paper The Myth of the Mother Goddess, questioned the practice of identifying Neolithic figures as female when they weren't clearly distinguished as male and took issue with other aspects of the goddess interpretation of Neolithic stone carvings and burial practices. The 2009 book Gnosis and the Prophet of Modernism by Kathy Gier examines the political influence on archaeology more generally. Through the example of Gnosis on the island of Crete, which had been represented as the paradigm of a pacifist, matriarchal and sexually free society, Gier claims that archaeology can easily slip into reflecting what people want to see, rather than teaching people about an unfamiliar past. Topic bibliography Topic Monographs Gimbutas, Maria 1946. Die Bestetung in Litauen in der Vorgeschichtlichen Zeit. Tübingen, H. Lop. Gimbutas, Maria. 1956. The Prehistory of Eastern Europe. Part 1, Mesolithic, Neolithic and Copper Age Cultures in Russia and the Baltic Area. American School of Prehistoric Research, Harvard University Bulletin No. 20. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Peabody Museum. Gimbutas, Maria and R. Eric. 1957. COWA Survey and Bibliography, Area, Central Europe. Cambridge, Harvard University. Gimbutas, Maria. 1958. Ancient Symbolism in Lithuanian Folk Art. 
Philadelphia, American Folklore Society, Memoirs of the American Folklore Society 49. Gimbutas, Maria 1958. Right pursue I R Vicaru Liatuvos Prehistorines Culturos Apvalga, a survey of prehistory of East Prussia and Western Lithuania. New York, Studia Lichuaca I Gimbutas, Maria and R. Eric. 1959. C O W A Survey and Bibliography, Area 2 Scandinavia. Cambridge, Harvard University. Gimbutas, Maria. 1963. The Balts. London, Thames and Hudson, Ancient Peoples and Places 33. Gimbutas, Maria 1965. Bronze Age Cultures in Central and Eastern Europe. The Hague, London, Mouton. Gimbutas, Maria 1971. The Slavs. London, Thames and Hudson, Ancient Peoples and Places 74. Gimbutas, Maria 1974. Ober and its place in Old Europe. Sarajevo, Zamalski Museum. Wissenschaftliche Mitteilungen des Bosnisch Herzegowinischen Landes Museums, Band 4 Heft A Gimbutas, Maria. 1974. The Gods and Goddesses of Old Europe, 7000 to 3500 BC: Myths, Legends, and Cult Images. London, Thames and Hudson. Gimbutas, Maria. 1981. Grata Scaloria, Resicanto sulla ricerche del 1980 relative a Gli Scavi del 1979. Manfredonia, Amministrazioni Comunali. Gimbutien, Maria. 1985. Baltai Prezistorinie Lycais, Etnogenes, Materialine Cultura i R. Mythologia. Vilnius, Moxlas. Gimbutas, Maria. 1989. The Language of the Goddess, Unearthing the Hidden Symbols of Western Civilization. San Francisco, Harper and Row. Gimbutas, Maria. 1991. The Civilization of the Goddess, The World of Old Europe. San Francisco, Harper. Gimbutas, Maria. 1992. Die Ethnogenes der Europäischen Indogermanen. Innsbruck, Institut für Sprachwissenschaft der Universität Innsbruck, Innsbrucker Beträge zur Sprachwissenschaft, Vortrage und Kleiner Schriften 54. Gimbutas, Maria. 1994. Das Ende Alteuropas. Der Einfall von Stepanomaden aus Südrussland und die Indogermanisierung Mitteleuropas. Innsbruck, Institut für Sprachwissenschaft. Gimbutas, Maria, edited and supplemented by Miriam Robbins Dexter, 1999, The Living Goddesses. Berkeley, Los Angeles, University of California Press. Topic edited volumes Gimbutas, Maria, ed., 1974. Ober, Neolithic Sites in Bosnia. Sarajevo, A. Archaeologic. Gimbutas, Maria, ed., 1976. Neolithic Macedonia as reflected by excavation at Anza, Southeast Yugoslavia. Los Angeles, Institute of Archaeology, University of California, Monumenta Archaeologica 1. Renfrew, Colin, Maria Gimbutas and Ernestine S. Elster Excavations at Cytogroy, a prehistoric village in northeast Greece. Volume 1. Los Angeles, Institute of Archaeology, University of California, Monumenta Archaeologica 13. Gimbutas, Maria, Sean Wynn and Daniel Shimabuku Achillion, a Neolithic settlement in Thessaly, Greece, 6400-5600 BC. Los Angeles, Institute of Archaeology, University of California, Los Angeles. Monumenta Archaeologica 14. Topic articles 1960, Culture Change in Europe at the Start of the Second Millennium BC. A Contribution to the Indo-European Problem, Selected Papers of the Fifth International Congress of Anthropological and Ethnological Sciences. Philadelphia, September 1–9, 1956, ed. A. F. C. Wallace. Philadelphia, University of Philadelphia Press, 1960, pp. 540–552, 1961, Notes on the Chronology and Expansion of the Pit Grave Culture, L'Europe à la fin de l'Age de la Pierre, eds. J. Bohm and S. J. de Laet. Prague, Czechoslovak Academy of Sciences, 1961, pp. 193 200, 1963, The Indo Europeans, Archaeological Problems, American Anthropologist 65, 1963, 815 836. 1970, Proto Indo European Culture, The Kurgan Culture During the 5th, 4th, and 3rd Millennia BC, Indo European and Indo Europeans, papers presented at the 3rd Indo European Conference at the University of Pennsylvania, ed. George Cardona, Henry M. Honigswald, and Alfred Sen. 
Philadelphia, University of Pennsylvania Press, 1970, pp. 155 197, 1973, Old Europe c. 7000 3500 BC, the earliest European civilization before the infiltration of the Indo European peoples, Journal of Indo European Studies, JIES 1, 1973, 1 21, 1977, the first wave of Eurasian steppe pastoralists into Copper Age Europe, JIES 5, 1977, 277 338. Gold Treasure at Varna, Archaeology 30, 1, 1977, 44 51, 1979, The Three Waves of Kurgan People into Old Europe, 4500 2500 BC, Archives Suisses d'Anthropologie Générale. 43 2, 1979, 113 137, 1980, The Kurgan Wave No. 2 C. 3200 BC into Europe and the following transformation of culture, JIES 8 273 273-315. The Temples of Old Europe, Archaeology 33, 6, 1980, 41-50, 1980-81, The Transformation of European and Anatolian Culture c. 4500-2500 BC and its legacy, JIES 8 I2, 9 I2, 1982, Old Europe in the 5th millennium BC, the European situation on the arrival of Indo-Europeans, the Indo-Europeans in the 4th and 3rd millennia BC, ed. Edgar C. Polame. Ann Arbor, Coroma Publishers, 1982, pp. 1-60. Women and Culture in Goddess-Oriented Old Europe, The Politics of Women's Spirituality, ed. Charlene Spretnik. New York, Doubleday, 1982, pp. 22-31. Vulvas, Breasts, and Buttocks of the Goddess Creatress, Commentary on the Origins of Art, The Shape of the Past, Studies in Honor of Franklin D. Murphy, eds. Giorgio Buccalati and Charles Speroni. Los Angeles, UCLA Institute of Archaeology, 1982. 1985, Primary and Secondary Homeland of the Indo-Europeans, Comments on Gamkrelidze Ivanov Articles, JIES 13 1-2 1985, 185-202, 1986, Kurgan Culture and the Horse, Critique of the Article The Kurgan Culture, Indo-European Origins and the Domestication of the Horse, A Reconsideration by David W. Anthony Same Issue, pp. 291-313, Current Anthropology 27 4 1986, 305-307 Remarks on the Ethnogenesis of the Indo-Europeans in Europe, Ethnogenes Europeischer Volker, eds. W. Bernhard and A. Candler Palsen. Stuttgart, New York, Gustav Fisch Verlag, 1986-5-19, 1987, The Pre-Christian Religion of Lithuania, La Christianizazione della Lithuania. Rome, 1987. The Earth Fertility of Old Europe, Dialogues de Histoire Ancienne, Vol. 13, No. 1 1987, 11-69, 1988, A Review of Archaeology and Language by Colin Renfrew, Current Anthropology 29 3, July 1988, 453-456. Accounting for a Great Change, Critique of Archaeology and Language by C. Renfrew, London Times Literary Supplement Jun 24-30, 1988, p. 714. 1990, The Social Structure of the Old Europe. Part 2, JIES 18, 1990, 225-284. The Collision of Two Ideologies, When Worlds Collide, Indo-Europeans and Pre-Indo-Europeans, eds. T. L. Markey and A. C. Greppen. Ann Arbor, Me, Kosoma, 1990, pp. 171-178. Wall Paintings of Cattle Huyuk, 8th-7th millennia BC, The Review of Archaeology, 11 1990, 1-5, 1992, The Chronologies of Eastern Europe, Neolithic through Early Bronze Age, Chronologies in Old World Archaeology, Vol. 1, ed. R. W. Eric. Chicago, London, University of Chicago Press, 1992, pp. 395 to 406, 1993. The Indo-Europeanization of Europe: The Intrusion of Steppe Pastoralists from South Russia and the Transformation of Old Europe. Word 44, 1993, 205 to 222. Topic collected articles: Dexter, Miriam Robbins and Colleen Jones Blay, eds. 1997. 
The Kurgan Culture and the Indo-Europeanization of Europe, selected articles from 1952 to 1993 by M. Gimbutas. Journal of Indo-European Studies Monograph 18. Washington, D.C., Institute for the Study of Man. Topic studies in Honor Skomal, Susan Nassiv and Edgar C. Polamay, eds. 1987. Proto-Indo-European, The Archaeology of a Linguistic Problem. Studies in Honor of Maria Gimbutas. Washington, D.C., Institute for the Study of Man. Marler, Joan, ed. 1997. From the Realm of the Ancestors, an Anthology in Honor of Maria Gimbutas. Manchester, C.T., Knowledge, Ideas and Trends, Inc. Dexter, Miriam Robbins and Edgar C. Polamay, eds. 1997. Varia on the Indo-European Past, Papers in Memory of Gimbutas, Maria. Journal of Indo-European Studies Monograph No. 19. Washington, D.C., The Institute for the Study of Man. Topic see also Louis H. Morgan J. P. Mallory Yamna Culture Vinca Script Johann Jakob Bachofen Topic References Topic Further reading Chapman, John 1998, The Impact of Modern Invasions and Migrations on Archaeological Explanation, A Biographical Sketch of Maria Gimbutas, in Diaz Andreu, Margarita, Sorensen, Marie-Louise Stig, Excavating Women, A History of Women in European Archaeology, New York, Routledge, pp. 295-314, ISB BN 978-0-415-15760-5 Elster, Ernestine S. 2007. Maria Gimbutas, Setting the Agenda, in Archaeology and Women, Ancient and Modern Issues, eds. Sue Hamilton, Ruth D. Whitehouse, and Catherine I. Wright. Left Coast Press Reprint Routledge, 2016 Hausler, Alexander 1995, Uber Archaeologie und den Erspring der Indogermannen, in Kuna, Martin, Ventslova, Natalie, Wither Archaeology. Papers in honor of Evzen Neustupny, Prague, Institute of Archaeology, pp. 211-229, ISBN 978-80-901934-0-6 Marler, Joan 1997, Realm of the Ancestors, an Anthology in Honor of Maria Gimbutas, Manchester, Connecticut, Knowledge, Ideas and Trends, ISBN 978-1-879198-25-8 Marler, Joan 1998, Maria Gimbutas, Tribute to a Lithuanian Legend, in Lafont, Suzanne, Women in Transition, Voices from Lithuania, Albany, New York, State University of New York Press, ISBN 978-0-7914-3811-4 Meskel, Lynn Goddesses, Gimbutas and New Age Archaeology, Antiquity, 69-74-86 Milosaskis, Saronis 2011, Maria Gimbutas, Some Observations About Her Early Years, 1921-1944, Antiquity 74-80-84 Murdoch, Maureen 14, Gimbutas, Maria, and the Goddess, Encyclopedia of Psychology and Religion, 2nd ed., David A. Leeming, ed. N. Y. Heidelberg Dordrecht London, Springer, pp. 705-710 Spretnik, Charlene 2011, Marler, Joan, Harmon, Harold, eds. Anatomy of a Backlash, Concerning the Work of Maria Gimbutas. PDF, Journal of Archaeomythology, 7-1-27, ISSN 2162-6871, retrieved 24 June 2014. Ware, Susan, Brockman, Stacy Lorraine 2004, Notable American Women, A Biographical Dictionary Completing the Twentieth Century, Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press, ISBN 978-0-674-01488-6.